Good morning, you guys. It is uh, Wednesday today. Yes, it is a Wednesday. Norseman, welcome. I have not seen you before, I don't think. So welcome to uh, this little broadcast. I'm here three days a week for you guys. Hi, Anand and Elaman. Welcome, you guys. So we're going to talk today about how open are we really? How open are we to life, to people, to new things? Okay. Thank you, Anand. So it is a very easy to stay trapped into our comfort zone. Thank you very much. It was a gift. Very easy to stay trapped and to be so comfortable that you don't want to step out of that and be open to new experiences. Uh, onichiwa. Onichiwa and Peregrine. Welcome, you guys. I am have my little... My little um, a Japanese dictionary here um, and how do you do ha haji men shite um, what is the wait uh, oh yoroshiku yoroshiku um, Hideko yoroshiku all right and peregrine took you haven't been here in a little while and the number joined joined us a number joined us and invited followers so thank you and hi Raven and uh, first day on Periscope to um, 2019 oof so and it's fine I'm fine nice to see you too I haven't seen you in a little while too so anyway um, the reason I wanted to talk to this is because I want about this it's because um, hi Sergio a lot of us a lot of us and I'm gonna include myself in that uh, a very long time close ourselves up to new experiences because we are scared we are scared of what um, is out there. Uh, I'm just trying to learn a few words. I'm just trying to learn a um, hi so desune. Hi so desune. Um, uh, mochiron. Mochiron. Mochiron hideko. Mochiron. I hope I'm saying it right. Vestilu. Welcome. I'm trying. I'm one person of many languages. Uh, this week on, on my YouTube, I'm going to be talking about um, my French lessons and, uh, and of course, um, Oh, le, le, yeah. Um, Miss Andrew, welcome in Indie Music Plus. Welcome, Mental Health Guy. Welcome, you guys. Thank you for being here, taking time out of your precious and important day to share uh, yourself here with others and with me. I, I really appreciate it. And 197, welcome. So, okay, back to, I'm going to introduce myself in a second, but I think this is an important topic for all of us. Uh, because it's very easy to stay stuck uh, because we're scared to try something new and that even goes with uh, food like uh, uh, hi Joe uh, we are afraid to try different foods because they smell different or they taste funny and we don't want to try it we are not open open to taking new routes to um, to work or to school um, so that's my O word in my book. I have this, my healing alphabet. Um, my, o, my O word is open. And I have a word for every letter. Um, hi, Sean. Um, I have a word for every letter and the O is open. And I talk about how most of us are closed because we feel comfortable or we are afraid that whatever we experience outside of what we know, hi Aqua, is going to be scary or worse. And so we stay stuck. But remember that whatever we tr did before, um, hi Bessos, whatever we did, uh, it was there was a first time for whatever experience you've ever had in your life. There's always been that first time. If you enter a new job, if you enter um, a new classroom get a new teacher, start dating somebody, uh, meet someone somewhere, it's always, but I'm comfy. I know. And that's the thing. We can all be comfy in our comfort zone. But remember, maybe your comfort zone wasn't always a comfort zone until you became comfortable with it. Remember that? So, it, it behooves us to open ourselves up to try new things and new experiences. Hi, Luciano. Uh, because when we do, we expand in this world. We expand ourselves. We expand our experiences. And even though 
it's scary. Hi, gummy bear. Even though it's scary because we don't know what's coming, it's still going to be a better experience. Now, of course, you have to be uh, uh, discerning about what it is you're going to try. You don't want to just try everything that comes your way. Hi, Renee. Because some things might be not for you and they may be a little bit dangerous or they may be risky. So you want to make sure that whatever you do try, that whatever you're going to try, hi, Fabian, um, is something that is going to make things better for you. Let me give an example, okay? Now, I don't like heights at all. Um, hi, JL. If I am in an elevator in a high building, I'm okay. I feel safe enough and I can look over the glass and look way below and I'm okay. Um, if there is no railing at all or like a little fence of some sort, hey, Aqua, uh, then I get very nervous. I get nervous and I'm like, oh, because it feels like I can fall, fall over, fall, fall over. So that's scary. But, um, hi Willow man, my son, uh, uh, some years ago wanted me to go rock climbing with him. And, uh, now can you imagine, you can imagine that was a scary thing for me. Hi Doc Tuesday. Because you have to climb, you have to climb, even the simple climbs, it's, you have to go all the way to the top of the rock and, and then touch a little bell. Hi, Daryl. And so you have to climb up there. There's no, uh, there's no little rock that just goes halfway. They're all, even the simple ones, if they're simple, it just means that there are the, 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 the rocks that you grasp are in a very simple place. Don't do something dangerous and risky. Well, if you want to do something dangerous and risky, just be very careful, you know? But I'm just saying, um, I'm just talking about being open to just even regular things, being open to meeting new people, being open to someone's advice, uh, being open to trying a new food, being open and, I don't, and to try and reading a different kind of book. So that's what I am referring to. I'm not referring to be open and, you know, go bungee jumping. I mean, if you want to, go ahead, but that won't be me, okay? Hi, Rockstar. Bungee jumping will never be me, ever. Uh, that is not a thrill that I want to experience at all. Or parachuting out of an airplane. No, thank you, okay? So... I am basically, um, even, even, even people who have their set, little set of friends, they go into situations where they meet new people, yet they are uh, very leery of meeting new people. They're scared. They're like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I've never seen that person before. Hi, Seth. I don't know if, I wanna, if I'm going to like them. I don't know. You know, you never know. Thank you for inviting followers, Seth. You just never know. So... My uh, proposal today, Hi Hasim and Mares, is for all of us, not just for, I'm not just telling you to do it. I'm myself, I've been working on this. Um, did anybody ever see the movie Yes Man? Um, it was with Hi Eru, it was with Jim Carrey. Did anybody ever see that movie? And that's kind of the movie that I saw that uh, sort of inspired me for this conversation. Um, um, good day to you. It's fine. Yes. Yeah, so you see that that movie, um, of course, you can't say yes to everything. And I think he learned about that at the end of the movie. To whom we're open because we got yes, of course. So that's what I what I said that you may have missed is that you have to be very discerning about who you open up to and what you're open to. You have to be discerning. So by trying a new food at a new, new restaurant, uh, by being open to a new experience. You know, maybe you don't like to dance, but you're gonna try dancing. Uh, if you go somewhere where there's dancing, simple level, how do I improve this? Uh, if you wanna learn English, then you gotta practice, buy a little uh, dictionary, do online tutorials on YouTube. Yeah, hi, Blue Eyes. Um, I'm learning um, Hindi, a little bit of Japanese here. So I, but I do it myself. I did learn to take French lessons, but how much can you open up to an individual? Okay, so that's a good question. 
How much can a person open up to an individual? All right, so as we talked, I think it was last week about boundaries. You're not just going to spill the beans uh, to a stranger and tell them everything about your personal life and who you're with, who you're not with, your family, what your father did, what your mother did, what your cousin did. You're not going to divulge that information. First, before you even divulge any information, you have to start out small. You have to start out just talking and getting to know the person. On, on Periscope, it's pretty easy. Uh, people's identities are sort of uh, uh, anonymous. Nobody really knows anything unless you see a little picture uh, there, but some people don't even have pictures and you can actually be pretty open. And I don't have any English speakers around me. Oh, that's going to be a little hard. So you're going to maybe want to get a little bit of a book um, to learn English. You think you should still hide things from spouse and kids, etc. Okay, that's an excellent question. Um, now, kids don't need to know everything in your life. It would help me out if I knew exactly what you were trying or what anybody would be trying to hide. Uh, but let's suppose that uh, when you were, you know, 19, you were trying drugs and, and you, you thought, oh my God, this is terrible. I don't want to de do that anymore. There's no reason you need to tell your kids, you know what I did when I was 19, I did drugs. You know why? Why do they even need to know that? Hi, Clear C. You don't need. They don't need to know that unless you want to use it as some sort of a lesson for them. Say, so, you know, when I was 19, I made a mistake. I did a bad judgment. I tried some drugs, and it was a bad mistake. So I don't want you to do that either. So unless you're gonna use it that way, but some things I don't think you have to reveal unless you want to. Maybe you had a very personal experience when you were younger before you even knew your spouse before you had kids and it's something very personal that you want to keep inside you know as long as it's not affecting your spouse or your children i think that's fine um i don't think you have to divulge everything because the truth of the matter is and i 100 open when i think it's a great idea um i think no matter how 100 percent open you are i'll tell you this I love to hear you because you're very interesting, but I also think you're, oh, wow, okay. Um, well, thank you for being here to listen to my talks. I, I would say <laughs> that none of us speak our minds 100%. I can almost guarantee that. If everybody spoke everything that was on their minds 100%, there would be a lot of angry people, sad people, disappointed people, and so forth. Let's say this. Uh, let's suppose I get invited to a party, okay, by my um, sister. And uh, my sister says, hey, Rosanna, and I don't have a sister, I'm just making this up. I want you to come to the party uh, this Saturday. So, uh, okay, self-love, I'll, I'll address that in a second. Oh. Okay, um, so self-love, how do you teach self-love? Okay, all right, I'm going to address that. So now you really don't want to go to the party. You don't like her husband, and uh, her kids don't have good manners, and the parties always turn into a big fiasco. So your sister looks at you with loving eyes, and you love your sister, but are you going to say right to her face because you want to be completely 100% honest? Listen, listen, Marie, um, I don't like your husband. He's creepy and your kids are just out of control. So no, I'm not, I don't want to go to your party. Okay. All right. Good. So yeah, hi, acquired mirror. You have to be very careful what you say to people. Um, there could be something um, that could be very hurtful. Okay. Here's another one. Let's suppose that you have a partner and that you you have a sex life with this partner, right? And two others, nothing. They got yes, exactly. Clear. See, okay. Let's suppose, and this is gonna be an important. I'll pay attention to this. Let's suppose you have a partner and uh, you have an active sex life with this partner, okay? Um, and that partner is okay. You enjoy yourself with this partner, but the last partner you had was really, um, in your estimation, superior to this one. 
Would you say that to your new partner? No. Why would you hurt their feelings like that? You're not going to go back to your old partner because they're, they're done. You broke up for other reasons, but they were very compatible with you in bed. The new partner is compatible with you with everything else, but not so much in bed, but you still love that person. Would you, you wouldn't say 100%, listen, um, Billy was way hotter in bed than you are, but you know, you're my husband and I love you. You would not say that that would be very hurtful. So why would a person even bring that up to that new person? You see what I'm saying? So I think you have to be very careful about what you say. Let your words pass through three gates. Is it kind? Is it necessary? Is it true? Oh, I love that Vivian. Is it kind? Is it necessary? Is it true? Yes. So is it kind? You know, um, why would you say, oh yeah, Billy was way hotter in bed. That's not kind to tell your new husband. Is it necessary? Heck no. It's not necessary to tell your new um, spouse that the other partner was way better. Um, you know, it could be true. It could be absolutely true, but it's not really kind and it's not necessary. So let it pass. Vivian is a great thing. Let it pass through the, the three gates, okay? So, all right, you can't always say everything, and I'm going to talk about self-love. Um, let me take just this, uh, two seconds to announce I'm going to have another YouTube coming up on my YouTube, Therapy Express with Rosanna. I would love your support. I'm growing my channel. I want to get to 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Um, it's Therapy Express with Rosanna, and I have a new topic um, every Friday morning. And if you want to join the giveaway, all your free giveaway, all you have to do is subscribe and um, say, hey, I want a chance to win a free copy of your book autographed, and you will get it in the giveaway, the contest or the giveaway. Um, yes, thank you. Except uh, one end, Vivian, one end. Um, the giveaway will be at the end of the month of February. Yes, the end of the month. And just make sure so I can enter you on the giveaway that you write. Um, yeah, there you go, Vivian, that you write that you want a chance to win the book. Now, I've had five winners, you guys. All five people have received a copy of my book autographed, okay? Here it is. And you too can receive a copy. Just write it in the comment section, but do subscribe. Um, I appreciate your support um, a lot, and I'm trying to grow my channel. I have 310 subscribers now. I'm trying to get to 500 and then go up until the end of the year. I get 1,000 subscribers, and then I can do live streams. So I appreciate your support. Therapy Express with Rosanna. Subscribe. Turn on your notifications. And this week, I'm doing a whole section on you. Um, I saw you, the Lakewood Mall, the other day. Really? Well, I did you really see me? Uh, hi, Mega. Yeah. So was I at the Lakewood Mall? I actually wasn't at the Lakewood Mall, but I was near there. Uh, I was getting new glasses, you guys. I can't wait to show you. They're red. They're so cool. But um, anyway, yes, so do the best you can to support me in my quest. Hi, Daniel, John. Um, oh, thank you, Evixen. I'm very well, thank you. So we're talking about um, openness today because it is very important to be open to new experiences that we can, as individuals, expand. Greetings in Jesus Christ's name. Okay, greetings to you. So it is important that you don't stay stuck in the comfort zone. And that would be like staying in bed. You wake up in the morning at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and it's so cozy in your bed. And that would mean that you stay in your bed all day long because it's so cozy in there. I know we want to do that because it does feel cozy. My feeling is good. Um, and so we don't want to stay in the bed all day long because what? We would miss life, right? We would miss life. And if we miss life, we are missing the reason why we're here. And that is to be, to live, to experience. So being open 
uh, what if you're too open if you reveal too much about yourself to others okay that someone else um, just asked that a minute ago and it worth it's worthy of repeating and I'm not necessarily saying you have to open up yourself to other people and just say whatever comes into your mind okay some people maybe enjoy that I don't know because they don't know what they're missing you have to be very discerning about what you talk about to other people, especially if you've just met them, okay? If you've just met somebody, then you want to be very cautious about what you reveal because you don't know if that person is trustworthy. But what I am talking about is to be open to experiences, to new boundaries. Oh yeah, absolutely, Vivian. To new foods, to new exercises to new movies, you know? The problem is some people can be too free-spirited. Some people could be. So thank you, Sean. Thank you for inviting. By the way, Sean was the fifth winner of my book on the giveaway. Congratulations again, Sean. And he subscribed to my channel. And I don't do what's up, no. Well, so you don't trust your parents. You don't trust your spouse. Uh, yes, yeah, so Sean did what I said. He subscribed to my YouTube. He put in the in the comment section he wanted a chance to win. And guess what? He won, okay? Thumpers, hi. And hi, Karen. So, um, yeah. So you too can be a winner. And the book is really fun to read and it's small. And we are, are talking about one of the letters. And the letter today is open you guys it is open and that's what we're talking about today about being open to new things even to new people to uh, new experiences and remember what I told you about being open to uh, music therapy and miracle mana is all you need well I would say Zan music man um, music therapy is great miracle Mar Mar medical marijuana may be helpful but I don't think that's the only reason we're on this earth Personally, that's just me. I think we're here also to be of service to other people and uh, to expand ourselves in as much as we can. Our minds need to be fed. Our bodies need to be worked. We're like workhorses, you know? We have to be moving. We have to expand our minds and we're learning all the time. So, and that, you get that by being open. All right, so as I was saying, I uh, went to the rock climbing and I'm climbing and I'm climbing and I'm scared because I am looking down and I am so high up. And even though you're tied up, right? And my son is down there doing this whole thing, right? Um, uh, well, I don't want to prove you wrong. I'm just giving you more to consider. But try to be more open to new people. And, yeah, so that's Sasha. That's what I'm talking about. Exactly. It's impossible to commune efficiently, such as religion. And, you know, um, uh, the religion, uh, yeah, I know. I should have not looked down, but I did look down. But after seeing it, it was, yeah, I want to see the Joker. I want to see that from the perspective of the um, psychological perspective. And by the way, let me take this second. There are a lot of new people here, so let me take the second to introduce myself. Um, my name is Rosanna Snee. I am a licensed marriage and family therapist. And I'm here Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And we talk about all kinds of things. Um, and so um, I have a master's in psychology from Antioch University. And I'm here to be of service to you. I've just recently started my YouTube channel. And I cover a lot of um, topics there as well. And now I have a whole new series called Bits and Pieces of My Life and Its Lessons. And I talk about... Um, things that, thank you, Vivian, experiences that I've had that I can share with you. Um, this Friday is going to be about my trip to Paris, what I learned about that, okay? Tracy, nice to meet you too. Nice to meet you. So I'm going to be talking about my trip to Paris, how I came to go, um, and what an amazing experience because I was very close to going to Paris extremely close I was scared to death nice to meet you too Sasha you guys are amazing for coming in today 1990 I was there in 2009 but you're gonna have to watch the video it'll be on Friday as usual would love to go to Paris yeah Tracy I'm telling you my experience and then I have at the end of the video you guys 
Um, there's going to be a whole um, series of pictures from Paris. Okay, so you're going to get to see Paris. Um, I'm picking the, my best favorite pictures. You'll get to see me. Uh, you get to see my uncle who's passed away now, but he was a very celebrated artist in France. So you get to see him. So if you can watch the video, that's what life is about, sharing it. Yes, so that's what I'm doing with my YouTube now. And the series is called Bits and Pieces of My Life and Its Lessons. Friday, we're going to be doing episode three. Okay, lesson three. It was, and I learned so much Sasha and I want to tell you what I learned how scared I was to go and what happened okay so that'll be Friday's episode on YouTube so check that out hi chase that paper okay so that's what's going so does anybody anybody here today have any questions at all about um, uh, difficulties that they have being open to new experiences to new people to anything that they have not known before. And I was like that, uh, to going to Paris. I was petrified to go there by myself. I mean, I don't even like to drive to Los Angeles by myself and go on all those different one-way streets. I'm scared to do that. So imagine now going to a full other country that I don't even know. I didn't know the language, thank God. Um, social anxiety, I'm always anxious to deal with that. Okay, so Tracy, social anxiety. Um, okay, and I address that and I also want to address the self-love because someone did ask me about that. I think the most important way to give yourself love, uh, and then I'm going to address two parts of that, okay? I'm more open with others for those who feel, yes, okay, more open with others, with others, okay. Um, oh, Karen, that's okay. I, I was fearless in my 20s and 30s. Yeah, everybody's fearless in their 20s. Eh, because we're so young and we don't know anything, right? <laughs> so, um, self-love. I think self-love is one, uh, trusting yourself. Trusting that you know what is best for you. Because we all have that internal voice inside of us that leads us, okay? So, trusting yourself. Those years ago, I struggled to let myself out there and make friends. Okay, okay. So, you too, Sasha. All right. Um... I'm writing it down. I want to make sure I address you guys. So if, if you are caring to yourself, let's, for example, I'm not fearless. Of how, like I said, my anxiety level is crazy. Yes, overthinking, my God, that gets everybody every time. That overthinking thing, every time. And it is a thing, you know? So overthinking, overthinking. Okay. So, yeah, we all understand that, right? So self-love. Self-love, one, you have to pay attention to yourself. Pay attention to what you, your body needs, what your mind needs. Your not, mind needs to be taken care of. It needs to be fed, how we talked about. Your body needs to be moved, needs to be exercised. Uh, self-love. Um, don't do things that are going to make things bad for you. Don't, you know, say, I'm going to go on a drinking binge and then uh, knock yourself and have a blackout. That's not self-love because you're not taking care of yourself. That's one aspect of taking care of yourself and giving yourself that love that you need. Um, and uh, you're a conservative, okay. And trusting that you know better uh, than other people might know about you. You know what's good for you. You know your body, you know your mind. So that's one aspect of self-love. The other aspect of self-love um, has to do with putting it outward. So if you are out there being of service and helping other people, you will automatically love yourself for what you're doing. I believe that too, Lamorak. I totally believe that that is our gu guidance. Yes, my guardian angel, my voice is always talking to me, um, giving me great advice. So yes, absolutely. It is. So when you start going out and helping other people, you are going to feel so good about yourself. It's almost like this love feeds in, in it, on itself. My fault is trust and opening up to love others and love me when it's hard to open up. Okay, so trust. Okay, all right. Um, yes, that's another important one. All right, so back to the self-love. If you treat your body with respect, 
if you treat your mind with kindness and one of the things you have to do to, to give self love you're too stubborn to listen well that's gonna be the the, the part that gets you do you believe that those who don't like themselves it started with parents sometimes yes sometimes people don't have um, good parents I'm sorry but that's the uh, I did close myself because I have certain trust issues okay trust issues of course that's that's a big one sometimes if we have parents that don't know any better um, and treat us like we are nothing uh, like we're not enough we grow up with that bad message you hate my body all my friends laugh about it okay oh uh, okay I'm gonna talk about that too oh my god so many good questions okay uh, been blocked twice this month because I wasn't good looking enough had no idea where um, they were so shallow really been blocked because I wasn't good look blocked from what what the heck thumpers <sighs> that's disturbing okay all right so back to let me finish self-love uh, when you start caring for other people that feeds on itself and you feel good about yourself because when you do something kind for somebody else oh it's amazing what you feel about you so take care of your body take care of your mind listen to your inner voice and do good for others that is self-love that's self-love right there and take Paul my gosh thank you for coming I didn't even see you come in um, okay so that's that on self-love okay you're not here to listen to respect for those who want to learn if you're not here yet L listen if you're here to listen and learn it's perfect if you're not if you're here to be a troll you know sorry for you because you know um, okay trust um, when you're open I'm not saying let's let's get this straight you know the respect from Caucasian people and I'm self-loathing self-loathing okay um, mm. Uh, there, there is a reason why people are self-loathing and don't like themselves and most of the time I think it starts out with our past uh, maybe the way that we were raised we weren't raised to think thank you for the super heart Paul thank you so much maybe we were not raised to believe in ourselves maybe we were taught that you stop talking you, you don't even know what you're saying you know you're so clumsy I can't even believe it why were you even born if you listen to that kind of stuff on a, on a regular basis you are going to be growing believing that you are not good enough that you um, uh, you can't even trust the people that you are supposed to trust the most which are your parents okay so if your parents you can't trust them how are you gonna trust somebody you meet it's very tough but how you gonna change that is to start understanding that if your parents made you believe something that wasn't real you have to start addressing that thought because that thought that you're not enough that you're not worthy that you're not lovable that thought is garbage it is she only had children because it was expected there you go that's what I'm talking about the racial aspects you know I know that uh, black people african-american whatever you want to say it have had a hard horrendous time in life and they maybe see something from other perspective that I cannot address that but don't self-loathe yourself because you're of a different color like me self-loathing myself because I'm Hispanic I'm from Cuba I'm gonna hate myself because I'm not white here in this white American that was born here you know and not to be yes so that's a great point Vivian um, and no matter where we come from what family we come from uh, remember that's always the reference point if you had a great family who loved and supported you that's your reference point if you had a horrible family that always made you feel bad about yourself that's your reference point you're gonna say you know what I don't want to be like that so it's like the reference point well I think you missed how, how to self-love take care of your body take care of your mind trust your intuition and your and your inner voice and your heart and then give all that away to other people that is how you will create self-love there it is and to know color only matters when you're painting walls I love it I love it how to want to love myself okay so um, 
So you say that self-love is more important than all of this. Absolutely. I'm not saying that self-love is more. I never said that once. I didn't say that. And what do you mean by all of this? I don't know what you mean by then all of this. Self-love, you actually almost can't love yourself because you are yourself. It's like uh, you looking yourself without a mirror. It's like looking inside of yourself. It's how do you do that, right? Uh, I'm using it in very loose terms. Um, what if you don't love yourself? Then we have to find out why. What is it about you that you don't love? What is it? Who told you that you were not lovable? That would be my question. If you came to see me, I would say, who told you you weren't lovable? Who told you you weren't enough in this life? Who told you that? And what is it about yourself that you don't love? What is there not to love, right? Uh, if, if it's not people telling you, it's how people treat you. Ellie, um, uh, yes, you're exactly right. Not, but sometimes they tell you and sometimes they treat you, right? All right? So uh, the way they talk to you, I don't love myself because of my manic episodes. Okay, so there's, here's the thing. Um, if you don't love yourself because you happen to have um, a medical condition, uh, you're being unfair to who you are as a person, okay? Pretty mean, devious, and conniving. Well, there you go. I have a really, and then said myself, okay, so hi, Tiny Joy. Remember, none of us, I have news for you guys. None of us are perfect. None of us. Uh, yeah, dads have issues, mothers have issues, but none of us are perfect. So if you set a standard that's just way too high because you want to get to this complete um, perfection, um, the glasses, I don't know, but I'm getting new ones. They're red. Um, I'm late. You're oh, really, oh my God. Thank you, Tiny Joy. To, yeah, this is a good group today. It's a lot of new people here today. Um, and thank you, uh, Prince Rosa for the super hearts. I appreciate it. Uh, you've won most boring scoper on Wednesday. Oh, thank you, James. The most boring scoper. Yes. Thank you so much, James. Very kind. There are people in the world like James and, uh, I think we should all aim to be like him, like James. Okay. All right. Oh, people pleasing. Literally several of have met doesn't like me. Okay. Okay. So, uh, people pleaser. If, has anybody, um, seen, uh, the new Tyler, Taylor Swift, um, documentary on Netflix. Has anybody seen that? They turn away after I'm disabled. So when women know about it, they turn away. Well, thank you, Dixie. Welcome. Um, are you against drugs? I am against anything that will turn your mind and not let you allow yourself to be clear, okay? And something that can hurt you physically and mentally, yes, I'm against that. I'm against that. Thank you, Alasha, Alasha Baby for the super hearts. Thank you so much. Uh, the other is Taylor Swift. Excellent documentary. And I'm going to suggest it to everybody, um, especially the people, Hi Tiguan. Uh, she speaks a lot. Yes. And do you notice in that, in that, in that documentary, everything she did, all the music, all the fame, it was because she wanted validation from other people. It's an excellent documentary, you guys. I really, I have no idea. I, uh, how I got featured, but it's an excellent documentary because she talks about how she, um, wanted that. Um, hello, all newbie. Well, hello, I share Lewis. It's always amazing. I know. And then she said, but if you only live because of the validation that you get from other people, there's only one way you're going to go and something, just one thing can happen and it can take it all away because it's all external. Okay. Uh, yes, yes. Very good, Roxanne, right? Thank you, Tiguan. Um, and follow me on YouTube, you guys. If you guys can subscribe to my YouTube channel, it's a new channel. I'm trying to grow it. Um, thank you, Rachel, for the super heart. Rosanna, a therapy express with Rosanna on YouTube. I have a new topic. I've got skits going on. I've got therapy advice. I got everything going on on my YouTube channel. I'm trying to grow it. I appreciate all of your support. Um, be the next subscriber. Thank you for the super hearts. I appreciate it, you guys. So, um, get me to 500 today. Get me to 500 today. 
and I will be ever thankful to you guys, okay? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. Yeah, I'm trying to grow my, chan my channel, Prince Rosa. All the new people here. Yeah, all the new people here, subscribe to my channel, Therapy Express with Rosanna. You will not be sorry. And write on the comment section that you want a chance to win a free copy of my book. And you will get, um, oh, no worries, Lane. And you will get, if you enter the giveaway, which I will announce the winner on February 27th. All right, but you got to subscribe to my YouTube channel and then write it in the comment section, okay, that you want a chance to win. And there have been five winners, you guys, five winners. So you too can have a chance to win. Subscribe, it's free, 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 free. Turn on your notifications, watch every Friday, and I will announce the winner, very short little book. Denise, hi Denise. I will announce the winner. Look, Paul is, um, Paul is, would you send it to Columbia? Absolutely. Absolutely, I send it anywhere. I send it anywhere. I've sent it to Canada. Um, I've sent it, oh, type it. Okay, um, it's Therapy Express. The book, this is the book, but the my channel is easy. Therapy Express with, okay. This is my channel, you guys. Therapy Express with Rosanna. Uh, how should you rather watch watch Scope you Okay, Scope is here every day, very interactive, okay? Um, YouTube has just different messages every Friday, and now I'm doing the new series, Bits and Pieces of My Life, um, and it's lessons. You're very welcome. And then I talk about a different thing everywhere. Last week I was at my gym, and I talked about how I ended up there at the gym as a teacher. Um YouTube will bring you to a bring you to wait. Oh, Rosanna, see, see on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, exactly. And Scope is very interactive. Okay, I mean, it's available in Japan too. Yes. Um, it's. Let me tell you. How do we elevate the healing alphabet? Thank you, Denise. Um, I'm so <laughs> tiny. Joe is so happy. So, if you want a chance to win, just subscribe. Subscribe YouTube. Okay, that's separate. And I'll announce the winner. On um, thank you, Princess Ro Prince Rosa. I will announce the winner on February 27th, you guys. But there's a cutoff. The Sunday before the 27th is the thank you, Alicia Baby too. So the, the Sunday before the 27th is the cutoff, and then after that, that's it. Now I love thank you, Lane. I love Periscope because I get to talk to you guys. And I love YouTube because I get to do all kinds of skits and um, and able to help you in different ways, okay? Oh, thank you, White Nose. Thank you so much. Thank you, Imki. Oh, my God, you guys are great. So, um, does anybody else, and I'm going over time, and it's okay because I have a lot of people, new people here today, and I want to make sure I answer all your questions. Thank you, Vivian. Yes, you guys are amazing. Can you get me to 500 today? Can you get me to 500? We'll see. Only time will tell. I am going to say, yes, I want to see Parasite. But the documentary with Taylor Swift is amazing. So she talks about all anytime thumpers. Um, yes, isn't it good? All the validation she wanted was ripped away from her with one comment from Kenya West who got up on the stage and just basically devastated her and um, it brought her down. So fame, yeah, fame could bring you up and you think that you want everything that fame has to offer. Thank you, Tiny Joy. But if you are depending on likes, if you're depending on, on people to boost, to, to boost you up and so that you love yourself, uh, there's only one way you can go from there because people will turn on you and they did turn on her. They turned on her. And this is where I am right now in the documentary. Uh, people started talking bad about her. They were saying she was too skinny. They were saying she was too fat. Uh, then they, they were saying she wasn't as good as Beyonce and on and on. Don't let the praise to elevate you. Be yes, exactly hearts. And this is what happened to Taylor Swift. 
I'm not a hero, but I've walked next to many. Oh, oh, that's nice. Oh, thank you for the super hearts, Denise. Thank you so much. All right. Any other questions? I'm here today. I'm giving extra time. Any other questions that anybody has? A trust. Um, <laughs> Jan, by what well, you just, you know, uh, Thomas, all you have to do is just put that little X on the top and you'll be right out of here. Um, yes. You have to have thick skin and entertainment. Yes. And I would be so afraid to be in that entertainment because um, they basically destroyed her and she disappeared for a year, for a whole year. Thank you, Lemorock, Lemorock, Lemorock. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So, trust. What do you do when CBT doesn't work because of the state of depression? Oh, okay. CBT is cognitive behavioral therapy, okay? Um, I am going to watch Parasite. Um, it is cognitive behavioral therapy, and it addresses the thought that leads to the action or that leads to the feeling that leads to the behavior, okay? So, okay, Lamar, Lamar, okay. So that's what, what a CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapist. You're, yes, thank you, Vivian. I'm getting closer. Thank you, all you guys who are subscribing to my YouTube. Um, thank you so much today. I appreciate it so much. And also, if you're following me on Periscope, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Sasha. Thank you so much for being here and joining our group. We have an actual really nice group of people that meet here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, and we talk about everything. We talk about anything that's on your mind, that's pressing to you, asking questions. So let's get talk about trust for a second and the body, and body issues, okay? All right, so people having a romantic partner will while going through depression and anxiety. Oh boy. Yeah. Okay. If you are, um, okay. Let's just mute this person. Okay. So, konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. I love, I'm, I'm loving Japanese. All right. Trust. If you were not uh, raised in a loving environment uh, and you wouldn't, you weren't able to really trust one or both of your parents, even your siblings, then you're going to have more than likely trust issues. If someone, oh, good for you. If someone um, abused you as a child, someone you trusted, you are going to have trust issues because the people that you uh, are going to trust the most have let you down. Uh, but what I want you to understand that do you wrong. Okay, people who do you wrong. Let me get my pen. I dropped it. Okay, people that do you wrong. Okay. All right. Let me just finish the trust one. And I will get to the people who do you wrong. So what you have to try to understand is that not everybody in the world is going to abuse your trust. But if you have trust issues because you've been betrayed then you have to go into new relationships with a, you know, careful type of energy. Because if you go into, hi Kendall, if you go into a new relationship and one, you're probably not going to be one to be open completely because you've had the issues of trust. A pinch of salt, I like that Paul, with a pinch of salt. Just be careful, tread um, softly because you don't want to get hurt again. And it takes a while to get to know somebody. You know, like even in therapy, when people would come to me, and I was abused and still has trust. Yes, exact, yes. Even if you trust, even if you uh, love someone that has had trust issues, it takes a long time. People who come into therapy, um, it takes a long time. It takes at least about five, six, seven, eight weeks for them to start opening up. They don't know me. Uh, you don't know your therapist. So you want to make sure, even though you know that they're there to help you, you want to make sure that you start opening up little by little. But with new people, just be aware that not everybody's going to betray you, uh, but tread softly with new people because you don't want to just open yourself up. But know that if someone betrayed you in your family, not everybody is like that. Not everybody is. And sadly, that's where you came from, but you can learn from it. And you can say, um, like somebody else, just say, I'm not going to be like that. I'm not going to be like that. I'm not going to put my children down. I'm not going to do this to them. I'm going to be loving and kind and supportive. 
So you can change things around. That is in you. You can do that. You don't have to just uh, be identified by what happened to you, okay? And that's not the main. Yes. It's like you're at a party, you know, 50 people say, hi, how are you doing? I love your hair. And one person says, ew, that, that's ugly. And now you're going to be thinking about that person the whole time. And that thing, that's one of the things that, that Taylor Swift talked about. She said everybody could like her, but one person could not like the song or whatever. And now she would be focusing on that. What words do stick. But if 50 people say they love your hair and one person doesn't, why are you going to concentrate on that? And that's what people do. And now don't trust anyone but you mean your family. Well, they have to be example of what not to do. Sometimes they are examples of what not to do. Look, you can trust immediate family. If immediate family was great, but also there are many trustworthy people out there. You just have to be hi, temporary monk. I didn't even see you come in. Uh, healing alphabet as well. Oh, Hideko, thank you so much. I didn't know you had my book. Thank you. It better be, yes, absolutely, yes. Negative comments do stick, so we have to be very careful what we say to people. We have to be very careful because anybody can just really try to rip you. Look what happened with Taylor Swift in that documentary. No, but people ask me that, Jojo. Um, I am from Cuba originally. Trust a naked magician more than I trust my immediate family. <laughs> well, some people don't have a family to uh, trust, sadly. So you have to build your own family that you can trust. All right, so what happens when someone does you wrong? Someone asked that question. How do we deal with someone who's wronged you? First of all, who is this person? Is this person somebody in your family? Is this a spouse? Is this a child? Uh, is this a coworker? Who wronged you? Who? No, Sean, that is not the answer. No. No, Vivian. No, that is not the answer, okay? Remember, everybody's going through stuff in this life. All of us. Everybody that you see is basically a walking wounded. We all have our issues. We all have our past. Um, yeah, you guys failed this round. Sean and both of you, I'm like, Vivian, not you, no. Revenge is not the way to go. So, wronged you. How did they wrong you, okay? Um, so depending on who it is and what they did, and I don't have that information, you take it from there. So let, give me one example of someone who's wronged you. Give me an example so I can address a specific thing versus them generally talking about it. You're a Scorpio. Hey, I my last boy, my boyfriend before um, my husband was a Scorpio. They're spicy. I like Scorpios. Or free, it's how you use them that may cause, yeah. Oh, I like, Paul, you're just like, such a, you're like a little Yoda. Never learn till it's done to them. Yeah, that's true. Lifelong friend, his family made me so bitter now. Okay, so fire up. So lifelong friend and his family made me so bitter. So what did they do to you to make you so bitter? And remember, remember, I know Paul has the best quotes. Cash checks of mine for years before I found out I was a T. Oh, okay. Okay, so your mother basically betrayed you. That's that's rough because remember, we're there to trust our parents. We want to trust our parents. And they're the ones who bring us into the world. And only three people showed up. Oh, so you invited all your friends to the baby shower and all three people. So now we know who your friends are, right? Now you know who your friends are and accuse you of something you didn't know. Sister, son, legal document, and name. Okay, all right, so... If it's something like that, um, yes, forgiveness. Let me just say something about forgiveness. Remember, forgiveness is the, the F word here, you guys. That's my F word. F, 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 F. Forgive is my F word. My parents didn't live my... Okay, so in some cases, high centrality, in some cases... The thing that people do is so egregious that you don't want to have them in your life, okay? You have the biggest love of them all. How is that? So in other cases, you need to forgive, but you don't necessarily have to keep that person in your life because that if you don't forgive, you are full of rage and animosity, and that hurts only you. Because you are the carrier of that hate and animosity. 
right? So in some cases, if you got tortured in a room and you are lucky to have gotten out, then you do not have anything to do with those people ever again, right? During the healing process, but you cannot hold that. Yes, and you will, yes, cancer, absolutely. Um, forgiving a start if you are stubborn, that's right. So if you, um, how, do you forg how do you divorce a family? Forgive only because I don't want to live without built up inside me. It's easy to forgive. Yes, forgiveness is for yourself. It's not for the other person. But sometimes people make mistakes and you have to assess what is it they did. If it's something just basically unforgivable, then you have to reassess that. You know, if, you know, you're, if your father comes to you and abuses you, if your sister um, is sleeping with your husband, if, some things are pretty bad. So in that case, yeah, you kind of divorce your family and you get away from them, move away, and you don't have to answer their calls. You can block them and you don't have to see them. I know it's hard. Everybody wants a mommy and everybody wants a daddy, but not everybody has one. Sometimes you have a mother or a father that weren't uh, worthy of that title. I'm sad that that's the case, but that is the case sometimes. Um, women absolutely abuse too. I'm not just saying that men only do. Yes, women, some mothers are horrible to their kids. You know, Crimean died Sunday and I feel badly, I feel. So your youngest brother did an unforgiving crime and he died Sunday and I still feel badly. Okay. Um, just because, okay, even, okay, I'm going to address that. That is very, um, toxic people. Okay. Cut, yes. Cut the, to cut the toxic people out. Do the money spirits cause mental health issues? Okay. Um, okay. Oh my God. So many things. Black sheep, um, brother. Okay. I used to think my family was blood and you couldn't cut ties. I'm leaving, but you have, yeah, you can, you can cut ties. Believe me, you can. All right. Uh, salute Gordon. A difficult days. This is so relevant. I watched everybody. Okay, thank you for coming in, temporary monk. All right. So, um, her brother did something unforgivable, and um, he died on Sunday. The person feels very bad. That is normal. Okay. I'm going to address this right now. If the person he was a child predator. Okay. So. Your brother was a child predator. Okay, that's pretty bad. But I am sure, or uh, it's supposed to have bipolar. Oh, wait, I lost my mind. Okay, hang on. You want my topic? I feel like, do you want my topic? I feel like you would get the most views. I don't know what your topic is. He was slow and emotionally disturbed. Okay, I need to address that because this is so important. Uh, your brother was a child predator. Okay, that was pretty horrible. But his all of his other identity doesn't mean that he didn't have something else that was some goodness in him. As you grew up with your brother, he wasn't a child predator when he was five, when he was seven, when he was 10. He wasn't a child predator then. So you have memories of your brother that maybe are good memories. And his death, okay, he was molested too. There you go. Okay. So his death is going to sting because he was your brother. You grew up with him. Despite the fact that he did despicable things, he was still your brother. So there is a mix in your body, you know, I still not like them more. Yeah. You can love someone and not like what they did. You cannot control love, especially if you grew up with that person. And he was raped and he died of rectal cancer. All right. So are you blaming yourself, Scientology? Are you blaming yourself? Because um, you had to put him in jail. You did the right thing. And you leave me alone. I don't know why won't you ask. Let me ask, ask that question again. You had to put him in prison because he was doing bad things to other people, to kids. Okay. So you had to do that. It's, it, you, there's no way that you could not have put him in prison. The fact that he got raped and died, you know, you couldn't have predicted that and you couldn't have stopped that. Okay? All right. So you had to. You had to. So don't blame yourself for that. What I would suggest to you 
you have to do it then you should realize you do it yes it still hurts it's still hard you can still you know if my son i found out he was a a rapist i'd have to put him in jail too but i would love my son but i cannot allow such a crime to have happened uh i'm dr c the reality is hurt people really hurt people without realizing it's due to their acs hurt people oh um doctor uh, hurt people really hurt people yes oh yes um uh yes that's true hurt people really hurt people that is so so true and and it's still hard because you still love a person not everybody is 100 percent bad you know uh, uh, i broke broke my family a sister think they think they made it up well you didn't make it up and they're gonna have to deal with their own uh, denial at some point okay all right so syntology write your brother a letter okay uh, hurt people hurt people that's deep I know that's what someone just wrote dr. C or whatever it is true hurt people hurt people and um, I love that title because it's so appropriate and let me just say that uh, for uh, dr. Campbell okay dr. Campbell thank you uh, when you have to do something like that you're conscious you have to do it and it's sad because not everybody's 100 percent bad um, and then there was a consequence of his death from it and you you can't help it. if your family doesn't believe you and your family's in denial there's nothing you can do about that okay baggage find someone who loves you enough to unpack. oh I, paul i'm gonna call you my little yoda i love that heal people heal people another good one latoya latoya and I'm on top sick with fibro. I have no support system. I am so sorry, but you know what's intelligent? You have a support system right now. And you can come in here three days a week and um, you can't have support here because I understand what you're going through, but you did the right thing. Um, okay, you have Jesus, good. You did the right thing. You are protecting children. And that way there won't be other children who grow up to be like your brother. Uh, advice for dealing with depression is I'd be falling into a relationship during that time okay um, depression with relationship okay uh, so you, you're you're very supported don't worry here you're very supported there's um tons of people here that are regulars I hope the new people come back but the regulars are always here and um, so you know that's probably another good uh, YouTube uh, uh, thing I should do because I, I was my son he was nine lucky it didn't kill it was oh it was your son there you go so you had to do it and now you don't want your son or any other child growing up in a horrible situation so yes you had to turn him in but write your brother a letter and and just spread spill out your your emotions spill out your emotions and you're sorry that it ended that way but you had absolutely no other choice because you're a kind, loving, conscientious person, okay? Um, my son forgave him. He's a man now. Okay, all right, good. Forgave him and he's moving on. So you did the right thing. Don't ever doubt yourself for one second, okay? The question, that the other question was, how do you deal with depression and being in another relationship? Okay, what I'm going to say about that is that uh, if you're depressed, you need to handle the depression first, I think, before you get into a relationship with a new person. Oh, thank you, teach, teacher of the word, of the word. Thank you, that's great. Um, oh, thank you, Zentology. I am really am glad you came in and just love yourself because you had no choice but what to do what you did, okay? Thank you very much, Vivian. We're here, Julia, not here. Then we all oh, shed a tear. Oh, oh, he's my little Yoda. You're hurting bad, and you're going to hurt bad. And there are no words for me to say that I, is going to take your pain away. None at all. So just just embrace your feelings. Anyone masters of music? Oh, but, but, oh, good. Yes. Psychology it was the best thing that I ever did. And I have a master's of psychology, and I am grateful every step of the way. How do you deal with isolation? Okay, isolation, and I'll answer that after the, the depression. To anyone that's had been hard times, please remember that you're never alone. We are all, yes, we are all one, for sure hearts. Taking medication, but I shouldn't heal for a year, and I kind of fell into it. Yes, yeah, so I would be 
um, very cautious because when you're depressed, you may not make the best choices and you may not be able to see things very clearly. So I would, I'm glad you're getting help and that you're getting medication, but you know what? It, it may not necessarily be the time to be in a relationship until you are uh, more healed. And you can talk about this with a person. You can say, you know, just to be honest and upfront, I am dealing with depression. And see what the person says. Do they want to go along for the ride with you on this? Or do you say, you know what, let's, let's take a break and pick this up after a while until I'm feeling better about myself, right? My heart is weak for this. It's okay if your heart is weak. Embrace your feelings. Write your brother a letter and, um, and just, you know, just... You have to go through this ontology. There's no way around it. Getting an or infidelity. My husband was unfaithful before he got married. Oh, before you got married. Okay. Infidelity. Okay, I can see. All right. All right. So, hello, buenos dias de España. Hello, from Spain. The other one question was, um, uh, wait, isolation. Isolate. How do you deal with isolation? Uh, you're very welcome, Prince Rose. Uh, buenas. How do you deal with isolation and how do you deal with infidelity? Okay, I'm going to have a few minutes and then I'm going to, I'm going to take a drink of water. I haven't talked so long, okay? I'm going to be open and play by so many people. Yeah, so you have the trust issues, Renegade. We talked about earlier on. I've been here since 1015. Just hurt. Undressed hurt can drive you to destruction in every relationship. Unaddressed, exactly. Um... Time to drink. Okay, yes. So if you are not addressing your pain, it will always be inside of you and it will forever haunt you. It'll be like a ghost, a ghost that never goes away and it will torture you. Whatever feeling you have, you have to be able to feel it and then eventually release it. You must. If you don't, anything, you can think it's hidden in there and one day you'll get a trigger and boom, it comes out again. I'm medicating for the irritation, I'm afraid to pop it up. Okay, so, okay, isolation. I would say, I would say start small. Uh, you don't have to be isolated, but I understand your fear. Start small. So um, go somewhere where you can be around people, but not necessarily have to engage people, okay? So for example, or go and sit at a library or a chair and read a book. Okay, no one's going to bother you, but you're going to be around people. You're not going to feel as alone. Go to a bookstore. Um, go to the movies. You're going to be surrounded by people, but you'll still be alone. It's kind of like just starting uh, to be around people. Okay, and you don't have to necessarily talk to them or engage them. Uh, next step, after you get comfortable doing that, Walk with music. That's another way. Um, that just tells people, hey, listen, I'm busy. I'm listening to my music. Uh, take a walk in the park. You'll be around people but not having to engage them. That's step one. Okay? Acknowledgement. Yes. Acknowledgement is critical. I can't even answer the phone calls. So if you answer, thank you, let's in. Uh, let's in. Uh, I'm doing fine. If you answer the phone, what is? what do you think is going to happen? What is the fear? What do you think will be the thing that's going to happen to you? Okay. <gasps> Paul, oh my God, you came in. I shouldn't even be here by now. I should have already been off half an hour ago. You might break down. Um, okay. And if you break down, then what will happen? If you break down. So, and you're saying you might. Probably not even going to happen. No man can hide from his fears as they're a part of him. Though. Yes exactly and it's so true you cannot hide from yourself they might call the police okay so what you're doing to yourself is you're creating a scenario that hasn't happened you're fearing a scenario that has and that hasn't happened the fact that you're fearing the scenario means it hasn't happened yet and i would bet that it isn't going to happen I think a lot of need you today more than the other times that. Oh, maybe so. So, okay. So, this is what you do. Okay? Yusa Jimundo. I'm just going to call you doll. 
Um, I know love is love, but if someone cheats on you, love yourself first and then go, that's it. Yeah, I'm still going to address the infidelity issue. I'm not done with that, okay? Oh, thank you, Cyrus. Okay, so I'm not done with this. Uh, anxiety from this, yes. So here's what I want you to practice, if you can. Do you have a friend or a family member that you trust? Okay, if you do, then have them call you at, say, 10 o'clock. Uh, in the morning, say, hey, can you give me a call at 10? Now you know it's going to be them, right? Is to say only what you need to say about being hurt. Okay, I like that, George. I like that a lot. Uh, so plan, people tend to think the worst. And yes, it, the worst rarely ever happens. Put themselves through agony and keep a cheating partner. Uh, okay, I'm going to address the cheating thing. I'm not done. So... If you tell your friend or your family member that you trust to call you at 10 o'clock, then you know the phone's going to ring. It's going to be your family member or your friend. You're not going to break down over that, right? And you're going to answer the phone and you're just going to talk. You're just going to talk. And you're going to say, you know, hey, how's it going? Um, and then that's it. And then you're going to say, listen, I got to go. Okay, good. Your companion Man pan, my man panion, okay, can help you, yes. So have your man panion help you, first time I've heard that word, help you, call you, and start practicing that way. Look, it's baby steps, baby, baby steps, all right? So, and practice answering the phone several times during the day. Your thoughts are telling you lies, and they're confusing you, and they're making you scared. Your thoughts, but your thoughts, just because you're thinking them, doesn't mean they're real. They're not. Our thoughts can do so much damage to us, really. I mean, it's just terrible. So, help. This is your assignment for the week. Have um, unaddressed hurt can deprive you of your ability for you? Absolutely, yes. Okay, thank you. I will sign on for help that will hopefully, yes. So, tell your manpanion, manpanion to call you. Hi, Rida to call you at different times during the day and you're going to be prepared and you're going to, I mean, what could possibly anybody say to you that you're going to break down on? The only thing I can think of, um, help me, yeah, the only thing I can think of, somebody calls up and say, are you sitting down? Oh my God, did you know so-and-so died? Oh no. Okay. But how often does that really happen? They're going to probably just say, Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Does not make away tomorrow's trouble. It takes away today's peace. Yes, exactly, Yoda. Don't let the I want to thoughts live free in your head. And they do live free in their head, right? Um, am I reading this? Shine a beast tonight. I cry from nothing, really. Because you probably need to uh, address what it is that you're thinking before you start crying. You cry for something. Your eyes are not just water. You're thinking something. And it is the thinking that is getting you to cry. And we didn't even get to, um, we didn't even get to the overthinking. Oh my God, there's too much today. I'm sure you saw you, I enjoyed you. I keep encouraged. Thank you, thank you so much. Didn't even call me to tell me they told everyone else you died and I felt mad about that. Well, you know what? Uh, you can't control other people. Thank you, Shines. It was only for me to speak by phone for six years now. Okay. I, we're going to we're gonna fix this thing here. We are going to fix this. The world is hurting. Mm -hmm. And look, my goal um, is just do baby steps. Just do baby steps to help other people. Okay? I am passing it forward. I'm going to help people here on Periscope. And I'm going to help people on my YouTube. That's my goal. Okay? So thank you for being here today. And oh, I want to cover the infidelity thing. That's the last thing. Mother needs and he called me crying with it. What an uh -huh. oh boy. Yeah, that's terrible. That don't listen to people like that. Thank you, Halcyon. Halcyon figures. So I'm gonna I have a friend that keeps taking back her abusive ex and I told her next time he hits you, don't run to me. Good. Good. I'm glad you said that because they will keep running to them. Okay? Yeah, that's right. You can only do so much. I am very glad you found me too. So my goal, <clears throat> my personal goal, I know the world is hurting. People are hurting out there. There's a lot of pain. Uh, my personal goal is to be here for you three times a week to help you in as much as I can. 
okay? And then to upload my YouTube every Friday with little messages and other words of encouragement. That's my other version of help. Okay, so I've got two versions of help is be here three days a week for you and uh, Pankanak and then on YouTube. The way you can help me, the way you can help me is just by listening and helping others uh, pass what you learn to others, okay? <laughs> and go subscribe to my YouTube and help my channel grow so that I can help more people. Because if someone can can feel good about a message they hear, then that's helping one person. If that person can share it with somebody else, that's helping another person, and so forth and so forth. And if there are any particular topics that you want to hear about, then uh, thank you, Syntology. Thank you so much. And if there is a topic that you want me to do on YouTube or here, uh, you can leave it in the comment section. Um, you can email me at inspired at rosanasneed.com and I will help you. I said, first time happens, shame on him. Second, yes, exactly, Renegade. Uh, when your days are, when you, you have a new subscriber, when, when are your days to do these? Okay, I'm here. Uh, oh, thank you. Very nice. Yes. Thank you, Paul. Listen, I'm here three days a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Okay. So three days a week, and I do an upload on new YouTube every Friday, okay? I know, Anthony, hi! I'm on ma major overtime today. I wish you'd have stopped at 11. I'm on a major overtime. So if you have a topic that you want me to do on YouTube, I'm doing the bits and pieces of my life now and the lessons I've learned. Um, so I have a lot of lessons coming up. This week on Friday is going to be what happened when I went to Paris. What did I learn from that experience? So tune in on Friday for that. And uh, and I'm gonna show lots of Paris pictures, okay? I'm gonna subscribe, I can get an, uh, I subscribe, everyone subscribe so I can get an update in new ones. Oh yes, get, yes, I subscribe to your channel, wishing you much wellness and success. Thank you, hearts, I appreciate. Yes, you're gonna have to watch on Friday to learn all about what happens in Tology. Um, Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yes, you'll learn what happened to me. Uh, what happened, how I ended up in Paris, and what happened. And you'll see all the pictures I'm posting, okay? Judge and Divorce Court says, don't ever make a man tell you more than once he doesn't want you. Oh, I love that. Okay, let me just finish this last, this last thing, and then I'm going to end. It's the person that wanted, you're very welcome. It's great to see you too. I don't see you enough, uh, Paul. The person that wanted to talk about infidelity, is that person still here? Because um, I want to address that because that's an important one. Or I can just start with that on Friday. Um, hi, Jess. Okay, so if you, if you are married and you discovered that the person that you married was unfaithful to you before you got married um, and you still love that person and this person is not a serial cheater they made a mistake they've owned up to it and they really love you and want to work on it then i say go to couples counseling find out what happened something may have happened something may have gotten triggered in them they thought oh my god i'm getting married they got cold feet they got tempted they made a horrible mistake they were drunk at a party uh it was before marriage i think she said Okay, um, so not everybody who cheats needs to be thrown away. And I am not advocating cheating, by the way. I am not advocating go cheat on your spouse. No, I would never say that. But if you're in a situation, uh, do the shadow work? What does that mean? During the relationship, not right before we got married. He cheated during the relationship, not right before he got married. Okay, so do you still love this person? Um, why did they say they did it? Do you trust them not to do it again? People can survive affairs. People can. They can survive affairs and the, the relationship can become stronger. But you've got to identify what happened. Okay, it's questionable. What happened? Why did they do it? Was it a one-time weakness? Was it like, um, <clears throat> we have a marriage doing it in three years and we have two children. Okay, do, are you trusting him now? Are you trusting him now? Did he explain 
uh, to you why it happened? Were you confident with what he said? Trust is the most important thing, but you can move beyond it. You can move beyond an affair. We mustn't always worry about what others, yeah. So I would say to you, very committed to change, but it's hard for me to let go. Okay, then let me say this. <clears throat> I wrote an article uh, for Life Hack magazine. You can look me up on my name. It's, and it's like 15 ways to uh, get, survive, and a fair and a betrayal. Okay, lifehack.org. If you go to lifehack.org, I wrote a whole article on how to survive a betrayal. Okay, there's some really good tips in there. But all I can say to you, you have two children. He's very apologetic. He's committed to the relationship. Most men cheat. I hang out with my guys. Well, I don't know if most men cheat. I don't know if that's true. Um, but if you want to stay in that marriage for the sake of your kids and he's apologetic and he's not going to do it again, then you at some point have to say, I'm letting it go. I'm letting it go. I'm not bringing it up again. I'm moving forward and we'll take it from here. And then you see what happens. If he were to do it again, God forbid, then you, then you have a new situation on your hands. But until that time, no, stop bringing it up. Uh, you've committed. You had two children with him. Uh, what bring the bigger pick in a situation? Well, yeah, you want to. Um, I believe some some are better hiding it. It's hard to forgive, but if you don't forgive, your marriage is doomed. Your marriage will be doomed. You have to forgive and move forward if you want to make that marriage last, and especially for those kids. Okay. You got two kids. You brought two kids into the world, did you not? With someone who cheated on you. You brought two kids into the world. So it is your responsibility. I don't want to read you. Not all men cheat, Scientology. I'm telling you. My husband doesn't cheat, hasn't cheated. My son doesn't cheat. My other son doesn't cheat. You can't forgive and bring him back for months later. Then it's time. To don't live with the burden of living with someone you have. You know, then when you react to change, you want to cheat. Not necessarily. That's a that's a false belief, okay, Scientology? That's a false belief. So what I'm going to say to you, uh, fun of heart, uh, fun, oh, why, I can't even remember your name, is try it for six months. Say to yourself, this is a daughter a few weeks ago in my postpartum university. Yeah, of course it has. Listen, for six months, or a year say I'm letting it all go I'm letting it all go he's apologetic he's never gonna do it again I love my husband I love my kids exactly Fabian I agree with you and I'm gonna give it my best I'm going to make this marriage work okay that's your problem because guess what the past no longer exists you're thinking about something that doesn't hasn't ha that hasn't not happening right now the only thing you have, literally, all the time, is the moment that you have right now. This is all that's going on right now is we're here. That's all you have. You have nothing else. You can't do anything in the future. You can't do anything in the past. You can only do something in the present. That's all there is. So now, today, decide, I'm going to make this marriage work today. Today, I'm going to make this marriage work. I'm going to love him. I'm going to be the good wife that I am and I'm going to treat him with respect and that's it today okay uh, call your man Panion yes today that's what you're gonna do it's in the past and you can make it you can make it people do stupid things people make mistakes I'm not saying if you start cheating you on a regular basis stay with him I'm not saying that if you made one mistake and you have kids with him Make it work for the sake of the kids and let it go. We can talk about this more on Friday, okay? Uh, if I'm here, I may do earlier on Friday because it's Valentine's Day on Friday, you guys. Yes, so I will be here. Now, that's it. You guys have been, um, you guys have been fabulous. Thank you for all the new people who have decided to try the channel today. Yeah, you have been in the background. Thumpers. So thank you again 
for being here. Um, yeah, for the sake of the kids. My God, he hasn't done anything since, right? So give him a chance. Give him a chance. People make mistakes. We're all flawed. We're all human. Thank you, Tiny Joy. Remember, if you haven't, go get me up to 500 subscribers today on YouTube. Therapy Express with Rosanna. Let's do this thing so I can keep bringing you content on Periscope and on YouTube, you guys. I have some fun videos on YouTube coming up, okay? Thank you so much. And everybody, have a beautiful day because you guys deserve it. Um, I hope so. I hope so. All right, you guys. Thank you. Come back on Friday, all right? Thank you so much. And bye-bye for now. All right.